I'm going to start recording and I'll just upload this. So yes, we'll just continue on. The last thing I heard was that you were summoning Grizzle. Yes. Okay. Right so next to the orc dude. So that should put him, that should put his little fiery explosion, little mini fireball. Probably okay. Kills that woman because okay. she can't make a deck save. All right. Um, no, she cannot make a deck save and he needs to make a deck save. I take it to, uh, yep. okay. To avoid the fire. Yep. Um, <laughs> all right. Yes. Um, I'm so annoyed at this stupid. And I also tried to find uh, the last show we did and I'm having, I'm struggling to find that where it is on my computer anyway. Yes. So sorry. I need to focus back on the game and less on the streaming. Um, okay. So, uh, let me get up his stats and to do a deck save on that. Mm -hmm. He's... Oh, he made it. So he takes, is it half damage? Nope. Takes no damage. Oh, okay. All right. So, but he's got this um fire elemental now sat in front of him. Yep. Right? All and, right. Yep. And bonus action. Okay. She's going to tell Grizzle to distract him. So he's going to use tiny little floppy firearms to use <laughs> help action. Basically just slapping the dude. So now <laughs> everyone gets advantage on attacking him. Okay. All right. <laughs> so he's getting slapped by an elemental. He's got a bolt sticking out of his arm um one of his compatriots is down and um one of them is skedaddled and he says all right all right all right stop 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 because it's his turn he's like stop 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 i'll tell you what you want to know um that's his turn so uh mara what would you, what would you want to do because that so that was his turn his turn is to indicate he is willing to talk um I, I, I all of a sudden got distracted, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the, uh, this is the, is this thug number two or? This is the orc dude behind or... the counter. Yep. Getting slapped by Grizzle. Yes. Getting it's slapped by Grizzle. Floppy hand. Uh, she kind of, wa she looks at him and goes, are you willing to talk, Ducky, or do I let the, the fiery, slappy thing continue to beat you up? I'll talk, I'll talk. Just, just get it off me. Just, ah. I have to point out, it does no damage. It's just slapping him. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it does, it, it hurts when he it slaps the bolt in his shoulder. He doesn't like that. Well, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark, can you call off Grizzle? <laughs> Okay, stop helping. It does. <laughs> we appreciate you, but it, it's hurting him. Uh, well, let this be a lesson to you. Uh, when you're faced with hmm, five heavily armored opponents, it's best not to try and haggle. Especially if you're in a wooden box. Yeah, put that fire out before you bring the cops over. The guard is right next door. They're going to start sniffing around if they see smoke, and then we're all busted. Well, we're actually helping the guard, so we won't get busted. Will we? I mean, <laughs> I think it is self-defense. The fire yeah. happened entirely at random. All right, well, I'm not going to put it out. I, but I'll talk to you, but put it out. Otherwise, the cops are going to come, and they're going to get in their way of talking. Okay. Habara or Clue, mm -hmm. one of you fire resistant funny duddies. I mean, she has control over fire. I just take slightly less damage. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess I can. I guess I can put it out. She'll cast control flames to put it out. Okay. Yes. All right. And so then he uh he sort of like steps away from being slapped by the fire elemental and. Comes around the front of the counter and says, all right, what do you want to know? I mean, first of all, uh, who are you running with? Uh, this is a, this is a, a Xanathar guild operation here. We're running. And what are you uh, running here? Um, there are some tunnels that run underneath this building to the docks and... Um, and we use it to smuggle things around the customs or smuggle people in and out of the cities. Um, that's probably where uh, Feather went. She probably ran down one of the trap doors and uh, made an escape. There's a whole bunch of whole tunnel system underneath the city that uh, that we use 
for hideouts or to store things or to, to move things around the city to not be noticed. Uh, well, I guess I have more of a boring answer than I expected. But... Everything was fine until that damn earthquake happened and brought all kinds of attention. And we've been shipping th stuff out of here ever since in order to <laughs> avoid anyone accidentally coming in and, and finding finding their stuff. So, I mean, you can look around, but we've had several days. Anything left is nothing of value to us. Uh, well, here's another tip for you for free. If you're setting up a front as a shop, actually try selling things. It attracts far less suspicion. Well, we did until the earthquake opened up the fissure and the city guard and the city watch just came over and suddenly we were flooded with a popo. Uh, well, Continue yeah. selling your merchandise, you stupid. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand why that would stop you from selling things. Yeah, well, I'll pass it up the line to Hopper Management. Uh, to be honest, considering you're talking to us, they might not like you anymore. Well, Doug, look, there's nothing here. There's more value of me telling them about who you guys are than uh, you what you're learning from me, if I'm honest. You guys oh, came back know. here looking for trouble. I mean, I guess we need mean. some dead bodies. Glue <laughs> just like kind of walks up to I guess you make a good point, like just kind of has he had ghosts for his rape here. <laughs> At the moment, you're like, you hear, start to hear, Oi, hey, is there a fire going on in there? Oh, city no. watch, open up. No and fire. It pushes through. It's fine. And uh, you recognize um, from the <clears> other <throat> night how you don't know how they didn't get fired. Um, but uh, you've got um, uh, Orvis, one of the um, half orc city watch guys who took off, you know, when and left you guys uh, undefended, is sort of pokes his nose in, sniffing around, going, Is there a fire going on? I could smell smoke coming from here. Oh, oh, no Jolly's like, no, no, Bye. no. It was a lamp that the oil got out. It's fine, well, officer. I mean, there's a fire elemental just standing right in the middle of the room. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it no, was. A... Confident number one. Aww, yeah. we missed you. <laughs> How are you, our friend? Mars just, she's done with it. She, she's like, I fuck your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, even Jolly's like, no, officers, it's fine. It was just, uh, we spilled some lamp oil and it, it got out of hand, but it's fine now. No, uh, no problems here. We're, we're all able to handle it on our own, aren't we? And he looks at you guys. Indeed we are, officer. Nothing to worry about. Don't worry, piggy. Uh, we don't need bacon. Uh, what? I'm being nice. It's not like Be I call them Bobo or whatever. Be nice in a less suspicious way, please, Mara. <laughs> All right. So the the guy kind of like yeah, the um city uh, watch comes. You know, he sort of like just sort of he gets the idea. He's seen this a lot in the dock wards. People don't want to involve the police. They just want to handle it themselves. And he knows he's not going to get any information if he tries to press any of you. So he's as long as the building's not on fire, he figures it's more than my job's worth. So he's going to go back over and watch people go up and down the fissure. Grizzle and Habara wave him bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> you know what? He doesn't watch. deserve to be nice to. He left his uh, commanding officer alone in a whole kitty caboodle explosion thing. He deserves to be mean to. <laughs> Not when we have a corpse, Mara. <laughs> we don't have the corpse. Yeah, you guys all were like standing in front of the corpse in a line. <laughs> oh right! <laughs> oh right! <laughs> I forgot! I forgot about the burnt corpse. We can now Speaking find the of corpses. Trolley. Do you mind if we take this one? And Habara kind of pokes the. Uh, yeah, I want to get her back to her Slightly family. Burnt. I want to get her back to the her family maybe we can do a res you know like no i, I can't let you take her sorry i, I also wasn't you know, asking <laughs> yeah well you know if you <laughs> want to walk if you want to walk past the city guard that we just talked our way out of you know you want to I mean, haul a body at the front of the store a bag of holding for the rest of the day so <laughs> 
it, then it's gonna fall out at the end of the night. Oh well. Yeah, I don't, don't think if we can really use human corpse parts to attract that. Worm. Yeah, I, I was just thinking how I'm gonna react as Morton. What the <laughs> fuck is that? You're bringing dead bodies. This is in the morgue. It's not a crematorium. It's a dung heap. You can maybe carve up like some of the meat. We can't just like fuck in the head. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I can't breathe. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, while Kelsey tries not to die, Thorvald <laughs> turns to Clue and like, oh well, I guess this is uh. More in your wheelhouse, Clue. I'll let you decide how to proceed. Uh, it's going to walk up through the airport. Sounds like really not doing well for the army. Whoa, Kelsey. Oh, you're right. She's... I can't. Co joking. Okay. So what was that, Clue? Yeah, just walk up. <laughs> It's really hard for Clue to intimidate Jolly here when Kelsey is. <laughs> you might have to mute yourself, sweetie. <laughs> I'm fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> oh my god. I'm good. Everything's good. <laughs> okay. Um, what was that clue? <laughs> He's gonna like walk up to like the Harvard Geek. Well, what I see in front of me currently is a very big loose ant, and I would rather not stay one. So, either I kill you right here, or maybe you um, think about a career change, or at least a faction change. Because uh, Santa's not been treating you well, and I know some people who might be able to use you. Oh yeah, does it pay well? Oh, it pays as well as you work, man. He thinks about it, kind of looks at you guys, and says, Well, you are pretty well equipped, and you don't run out on each other. Yeah, well, let me, let me think it over. I have to take care of a stork here. Uh, where can I follow up with you? <laughs> uh, Selva well, reaches into the inside pocket of his coat, pulls out the silver case, <coughs> lets it open with a flourish, and brandishes a card. You can find us here. He, he takes it uh, with his, his left hand, because his right one is still injured from the cross bolt that uh, Gorko put into his shoulder. Um... <laughs> He picks it up, he's all right, all right, well, if I come by, it'll have to be after dark, because I can't risk being seen by the Xanathar Guild. They don't, they don't take too well to, to people crossing over, so I might need some protection for a while as well. Understandable. Uh, I'm sure we could have managed that, couldn't we, Clue? Yeah, I uh, know a big hall fork that will be more than uh, capable of protecting you. All right, all right well... Well, I guess I will we'll see you later. See you later, buddy. <laughs> Just like, here we Taps uh, his hands on his good shoulder. <laughs> all right, like, all right, like, um, he is literally, he's like legit impressed with you guys. Like, he's, you know, like, yeah, this is, um, not how he was planning on it playing out. Um, and, yeah, he kind of watched you kill some of his co-workers, but he didn't really like them very much anyway. So it's... <laughs> well, he won't give us her body for some reason. I know, right? Well, I mean, it is kind of a weird request. <laughs> I mean, we set his place of business... Well, I set his place of business on fire. <laughs> uh, well, it's more like this is... um. Think of him more like a security guard. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, his name is on the front door, but he's really just there to, you know, he's a low level grunt who's not trusted with anything except being the face of a front. And uh, he watches all the business happen in the back um, and people are yeah pushing him around and expecting him to do whatever, whenever. Um, So, yeah, I mean, you're you're, you're okay. You you know, like I said, um, if you were going to win someone like that over, this is not a bad way to do it. So he's mm-hmm. he's not going to hold a grudge if you beat him in a fair fight. Mm-hmm. And low-level grunts like that just sit and watch doors all day tend to see a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, at very least, knows about the underground network. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very good. I yeah. still hurt. <laughs> all, right. all right, so as you guys are um, heading out of the door, um, you hear a voice going, Hey! I know you guys. I remember you. And uh, as you turn around, you see um, once again playing the role of the the drunk <laughs> is Otto, um, whom you remember is uh, really in uh, works on behalf of the Black Staff of Waterdeep. <laughs> Keep the corpse out of sight. <laughs> oh, you guys are you guys are outside now. Like you've left the okay. warehouse. Yeah, I figured like after you've done your business, you walk out the door, and as you're leaving the shop or the warehouse, I... okay. Yeah, you see a drunken male halfling stumbling towards you because this is uh this is how he does his reconnaissance work in the dock ward. Is he? It's just he plays a drunk. And to say, I was looking for you guys at your bar. And you weren't there. We should go and have a drink. We should go and have a drink and we should talk. I haven't seen you in forever. And he kind of like grabs Selvar's arm and Clue's arm, kind of balances himself and says, let's go into an alley in a much more sober tone. Uh, and have okay. a drink? Really early in the morning, man. Like, mm-hmm. yes, of course, nine in the morning is a bit early to be drinking. Yeah. <laughs> but you're uh, drunk. Speak in an alley. Yes. Yeah, so, so you stretching and you know we clap your hands. <laughs> All right. So you guys were in fu- Fish Gut Alley, right? Don't you... yeah. Where did that go? I hit enter. Um. Sorry, I keep, I'm moving you on the maps because. I'm trying to remember. Oh, it's a little bit farther down. Okay, it's it's over here, Fishcut Alley, right? Um, yes. So he is going to lead you guys. Um, ah, like I'm trying to move the map, and I forget. I have to go from like pan to. Yes. Yeah, so, um, at Fishcut Alley, he takes you over behind Spices Street, and actually walks you closer to the docks themselves. Um, in this part of the, the dock area, uh, it's a, a little bit quieter because you've got these docks where there's business going on. And then most of the people here, um, so he's going to take you actually like more in this area. Most of the people come off and they head down toward the docks. And whereas this is just like more of a residential area. Um, okay. And uh, when he gets there, he um, looks a little, you know, he kind of doesn't keep up the drunken um, half elf. Oh, sorry, um, halfling act as much anymore. And he said, um, um, so the, the black staff, uh, asked me to task you with one final thing, um, before formally inviting you to become members of Force Grey. Uh, you guys have rendered amazing service to the city. And she, um, Vajra is in- incredibly impressed and happy and, she thinks that perhaps you guys are the right people for this task, given your success with the last things that you were asked to do. Um, we've had rumors of, I, if you can believe this, um, not one but two dragons in Waterdeep this week. We've heard um, rumors that there is a young dragon in uh, the rural areas of the town in Underhill, is that what it's called? 
Mm-hmm. Yes. <clears throat> in the Underhill, living maybe on a farm somewhere, Undercliff Village. Um, it, it's not hurt anyone, and, and it's it's not done anything, but we just don't know what its intentions are. Um, and so... I only imagine its intentions as being a dragon. Yeah. What if it has positive intentions, like not to hurt anyone and just to lay low until the evil dragon is gone? That's fine, we just don't know. Uh, it's just, <laughs> That's people... very specific, isn't it, Mara? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you shut up, Clue Mister? I start fights wherever I go. <laughs> look, look, we don't want to. As a general rule, the city doesn't allow dragons inside because of their ability to wreak a lot of havoc with fire in a very densely wooded area. So it's a protection Pressure thing. Would be bad. Yes, and yeah. so we don't have anything against dragons, and we also don't want to start any fights with dragons. Um, but and if their intentions are are fine if they're going to be just living their lives. And I have to say, both of these dragons are metallic. So we think that they they are just perhaps wandering around or lost or maybe doing some dragon adventuring. But but to be sure, we would like you to assess their attention intentions. So there's the one dragon um, that we've heard rumors about over in Undercliff. Um, there's also been some rumors of a, a, another dragon um, so the one in the um, Undercliff seems to have been a brass dragon. Uh, we know that they prefer dry areas, sandy areas. We think it's probably waylaid or on its way somewhere else um, uh, because it doesn't seem to, you know, farm area isn't where those kinds of dragons like to settle. Um, but uh, the other one that uh, we've heard rumors about is a, a bronze let me find it. No, I thought we. I thought it was a green dragon. No, definitely not. No, no they're metallics. The okay. green dragon is the one ch- yeah. that chased uh, Dabby's family away. Yes. That's not your dragon yeah. that's in one of it. So technically, this is the third dragon we've heard about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, uh, good to know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a bronze dragon has been sc- scared a couple s- sailors by popping out of the water and asking them if they have treasure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so like i said dragon stuff yes um they just need to know that they can't be like popping out of the water and hassling people and if they're planning on moving on or you know if if, if they're not we should also know about it so we can inform the sailors of, of how to avoid them so that they're not pestered by um dragons asking them to please hand over some gold for their their um collection of treasure uh, Wait, so, um, being that we are measly, um, bipeds, um, in their eyes, um, what gives us the right to tell dragons what to do? Oh, you don't have to tell them what to do. We just want to know whether or not they're a problem. If they're a problem, mm-hmm. come back and report to us. We'll have other people deal with them. Right now, we just need a group of um, adventurers who are willing to head out there and assess their intentions um, and report back to us whether or not they think that they are actually, you know, benign or if they think that they are up to something a bit more nefarious. Mm-hmm. Well, I can... Uh pretty confidently assure you that the young brass in Underhill uh, will be no problem at all. Um, They are just uh, taking shelter for a short time before they can return home. They will be absolutely no trouble at all. As for the bronze, I'm I'm sure we can investigate this for you. Uh, Okay, well that's good to know. Um, There are five bottles of underwater breathing potion um, that have been delivered to the tavern. Um, if you can take care of this problem in the next couple of days, there's nothing pressing. Um, you know, um, the, it seems like this uh, young bronze dragon is, has been around for a while, but given all the other things that are going on, um, the Blackstaff just wants to make sure that there isn't something be assembled. It's not, we don't get a lot of dragons and to have two pop up within a couple weeks of each other, it's it's just a little bit odd. I get to meet a baby dragon, a baby dragon, a baby dragon. I get to meet a 
baby dragon and maybe adopt it too. <laughs> Otto <laughs> just <laughs> applauds. That's a baby dragon. <laughs> this one is uh, told. So, wait a minute. You guys know the dragon in Undercliff? No, we don't we know do. dragons. No! Fucking <laughs> jerks. <laughs> 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 He kind of looks at you guys and like, you should really get your story straight before you leave the house. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna, as a professional, as one professional to another, you know, you guys should like, I mean, I appreciate working with you because you're open as a book to read. It's so easy to read to your people. But um, maybe get your story straight before you leave the house. It's, it's well, Mara. Mara. <laughs> I said I get to meet a baby dragon, implying that I haven't met a baby dragon. So <laughs> it was Thelvar who said, well, I could say that the bronze dragon or whatever the dragon is that's out in the boonies is going to be fine. I was like, going she ahead. has a point. She was just singing about the future. It was Thelvar who kind of gave it away. I mean, it's <laughs> fine. It's not illegal to know dragons. So it's just, um, you could have reported to us. He already said that he can assure him that that dragon's not a problem, implying <laughs> that he knows the dragon. Blame, blame yep. me, Mara, for bullshit that she hasn't done. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Clue. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, yes, in, in, indeed I do. Um, they uh, took shelter in a cave. Uh, which le basically led into uh, an area where the fisher w is. Um, and we uh, saved them and uh, helped them out of their cave while we were down there. Um, uh, they just need to rest for a few days before they make their journey home. Oh. You know what? We might as well just tell the whole fucking story if we're just going to out it. Why were they in the cave? That fissure, the, the dragon being in the fissure, is kind of a bizarre place for a dragon to hide. As I said, they took shelter in a cave. But why? That I mean, dragon's going to dragon. Well, dragons need somewhere to sleep, you know, Mara. They yeah, but we might as well with... just tell the whole flippin' story about there being a big bad, too. Otto's just shaking his head and looks at Gorko. He's like, are they always like this? And Gorko's like, yeah? Clue's <laughs> <laughs> literally down with, like, head in hands. Oh, what the fuck is all right. Well, I mean, again, it's not illegal to know dragons or fraternize with dragons. However, if um, you want to, it would provide you with brownie points if you were to notify Vajra Safar uh, uh, of the arrival of or staying of dragons uh, and in and around Waterdeep in future. Uh, it's just something the Blackstaff will eventually hear about anyway, so it's always better for her to hear about it from people who... There's a big evil dragon! It's green! It's going to kill us all! Uh, where is it? Is what? More south, really. Oh. Probably coming for Waterdeep, but, you know, it's keeping uh, the brass dragon over here. It's currently uh, in running away from it. That was more down the Sword Coast somewhere. We don't have to worry about that quite yet. Well, Not eventually. Be... Tell the story. You might as well just tell the whole fucking story. <laughs> Not always, Mara. All right. Well, I will. Is your friend. I will. Uh, I will uh, report back Fine to the Black me. Staff about the young brass. Uh, that it's not a threat, that it's an orphan, or it's been separated from its family. Um, do you know, uh, is it living from, like, villager to villager? I don't, is it just a sleeping rough? Do you know uh, what's what's its current status? Is it, it seems to be mostly sticking around one farm. Do you, do you know why that is? Yeah, it's helping the bread people. <laughs> don't tell them about the bread <laughs> what's wrong what's wrong with the bread <laughs> nothing wrong with the bread <laughs> Silva, Silva has a big pulsing vein in his forehead <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault Silva. It's, a, it's mostly just we don't want Silva to be going on a virtual beer for half an hour <laughs> Mark, uh, looking at Silva's like the the vein pulsing in Thelvar's head and going, it's your fault. We're in this mess already. 
All right, well, well, look, okay, so the young uh, brass isn't a problem. Please look into the young bronze. I will report back to the black staff. And despite my better judgment, I think she's going to offer you... I mean, you guys, for as messy and as loud and as argumentative as you are, you get results done. And at the end of the day, she has to deal with wizards, so she's used to dealing with people who are different than you'd expect. So, I guess... Will you at least warn her about the weird green that is causing the dragons to be displaced? Because that could be a thing! He points at it's Clue in- and goes, this weird green? <laughs> dragon man, I can't force dragons out of the just yet. Jesus. No, not my weird green. Not my weird green, because trust me, this weird green tests me on a daily basis and he's lucky he's not dead yet. No, the weird Fucking green funny. dragon. I think that there might be a displacement thing going on with the baby green, with the baby dragons and the families. Uh, well, I don't know that we have any resources given the gang wars and the I know, terrorist attacks. Okay, Just all right. Well, that I'll. Staff. That way, she has at least an idea I of will. what is going on. I will. I will let her know that there is a green dragon that seems to be menacing metallic dragons, especially ones with small families, and might be causing more displacements. Thank you. You're that welcome. That is all I need. Yep. I appreciate it. No problem. She'll want to know anyway, so yes, all information is valuable. See, and now I can go harass the rest of my crew. Yes, I will leave you to it. Thank you. Like I, I am so sorry. <laughs> no, oh, no. Oh, what did we learn? Keep this fucking mouth shut. So there are. I don't like, really see the problem. I mean, just the dude. He already knew it was there. The dragon. Yeah, what is he gonna do? He didn't know we I mean, had any relationship with the said dragon. It's a young dragon. It's still pretty easy to stop. Point. Yeah, he's like, oh, by the way, um, if you get the job done, there's uh, two hundred gold pieces in it for your your company, your party, your venturing company. So. All right, uh, you sort of. All right, but it's always interesting talking to you guys. You guys, you make me laugh. And he sort of stumbles <laughs> off back into mm-hmm. the streets Bye, of the dog Bye, Bye, sober Thanks. lady. <laughs> God, my God, I'm gonna die. <sighs> yeah, and he's gone. Save well, me. Let's move on. Or shall we? <laughs> yes. You sure about that? Please, let's move on. <laughs> we haven't gotten very far. Uh, well, actually, you've done a lot so far actually, before noon, I'd say. Uh, uh, what's <laughs> next on the agenda? Can I go back to bed? Uh, no anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Find duct tape from Belvoir's mouth? Wait, did oh, he even mention mouth? where to bro- <laughs> Yes! From my yeah. mouth? I yeah. was dealing with it without giving away everything! <laughs> You're the one who gave away the biggest thing! But even his tactic! He knew that thing! He didn't to be know fair, we knew about the thing! To be fair, Belvar just let it there, and then Hibara just confirmed it. <laughs> yes, but Hibar, like Hibar can light Mara on fire, so whatever. That is also true. <laughs> <laughs> and then Belver's like, "Well, I'm just going to tell the story of how we met it, and that leads out the most important part of as to why the poor little dragon is in the situation in the first place." It's like. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it is best not to show all of your cards. You showed all the important cards. Not all of them. You... Trust me. What? All 
You, you, you showed the one card, the, the, the green dragon card you did not show. At least and you didn't tell him about the corpse. <sighs> we don't Which even corpse? have the corpse! The one in the basement. Oh. <laughs> I forgot about that one. We have multiple <laughs> corpses in the air right now. <sighs> we do. We're <laughs> corpses! How the hell is that a thing? <laughs> All right. Yes. I'm part, of the, I'm part of the only reason I ended up having to show more cards than I wanted to is because you two couldn't keep your mouths shut. Again, you're the one who said that we knew how the dra we knew the dragon. He didn't ask us if we knew the dragon. We could have just knowing said the dragon isn't illegal. Yes. Please trust people that know this damn city. <laughs> Mara just is like, eh, bang, 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 bang. we could have just pretended that we didn't know the dragon. Eventually, we would have to report on him, and at that point, we wouldn't know the dragon. Exactly, but we could have eventually reported on the dragon and said, oh, the dragon is a good dragon. She's just hiding. So now they know something slightly earlier. All right, so what direction are you guys walking and having this argument in? <laughs> I don't even I know no if we're idea. moving at this point. <laughs> yeah, we're just yelling at very each other. True. <laughs> Mara's just like so confused as to why we didn't hide the information. She's just like, I don't understand. Like, we kind of hid the information again. She's bored. Like, you, you, she, you, like I, I, I don't know if the rest of the party is realizing that, like. Innocent Mara is slowly turning into a more devious Mara. <laughs> <laughs> it's Clue's influence, isn't it? <laughs> not, no, it's War's influence. Because <laughs> War is like, yeah, no, like you lie, lie about this. You don't tell, and you don't tell people of power that you know something before they know something. Unless you're trying to make the people in power more impressed with you. Oh, no. Mm -mm. You'll let power of information is bits. when you share it. It's a case of what you share and when you share it. See, knowing that they, knowing the green dragon would have been the thing that you want to share. That <laughs> she's hiding from the green dragon. That is what, that would have been the piece that you wanted to share up front. No. no not really. If we share about the green dragon, then they'll send off other adventurers to take care of it. If we took care of the drink green dragon while helping our brass friend, we are the heroes. Yes, but the fact that we know about the green dragon first. <coughs> wink wink nudge nudge and we're already in charge of all the dragon falafaloff. They're going to yeah. put us in charge of the green dragon falafel off. Yes, but they don't know, that need to know that we know about the green dragon. We could have learned about the green dragon after they had left. Oh, you have a lot to learn, little one. And you have a lot to learn, Ducky. <laughs> Trust me, I've done a whole lot more learning than you have. Uh, yeah, I bet <laughs> university taught you a lot of stuff, buddy. Uh. So, uh, where are you guys heading to next? I mean, what is the plan right now? Because we could maybe like look for a boat to check out the Bronze Dragon. Or... Did we have anything else that was assigned to us before we were assigned the dragons? Well, you do have uh, basically two leads from the fireball explosion mm -hmm. in the alley. One is you have permission from um, Hustis <coughs> to, uh, if, if you uh, want to hire a cleric who can speak with the dead or find a cleric who... Actually, about that, uh, if I remember correctly, that's a level 3 spell, right? And I still have the documents of Satchel, which gives me a level 3 spell, so I could just use that. So oh, we yes. Don't need to hire somebody. Okay. Um. It. Uh, it. Well. Of course. If you only want to talk to. I mean. There's also the two Zenth agents as well. Ah. Uh, fair point. 
if you wanted to mm-hmm. interview them that were trying to capture or were chasing the one that mm-hmm. um, Ursul got Ursus um, got away. Uh, also, um, Hibara, I forgot to give you the opportunity to use your oculator, um, your <laughs> special um, thing to look at a body. If you want to go back, well, before you leave, while Jolly's uh, um, moving. Um, it wasn't feather. It was stork. Um, out the way. Do you remember the thing that you can study a body for yeah, one I minute? I remember it. Okay. Yeah, and we get a D ten if I remember correctly. Yeah. So because I kind of pressed you out of the in the street, if you want to retcon that as to uh, you took a no, minute. No, no, no. It's fine. It's it's perfectly. Okay. It's new for her. She wouldn't think of that at the time. Okay. Okay. Right. Um. Okay. Yes. So that's um that's the situation. Um, oh, also, you, um, um, Renée told you that the, or you guys were prompted to remember about the House of Gond, which is the church that sponsors the um, big automaton uh, statues and the festivals that go on in Waterdeep on special occasions, and that what the woman described, the gold, like, puppet man, sounded a lot like a smaller version of one of those massive city automatons. Mm-hmm. Interrogate mm-hmm. a corpse? I mean, fine by me. All right. Um, okay, so uh, you guys, um, the carriage, if you want to walk back down to where you got dropped off on the corner of the way of the dragon and the smaller side street where you started your job mm-hmm. uh, you can get your um rickety cart get back in there and you can argue all the way back to <laughs> as you head up toward uh, the official police station which i tried to look up and i couldn't find it um on the map so we're just gonna say it's it's pretty close to the city headquarters um uh, so you're going to head over into, like, the Trades Ward area north of the Dock Ward, uh, come back up the Way of the Dragon and, and head over, and that's where the government buildings are, as well as the city morgue. Now, if you've got a, a local death, you take it to a normal um, sort of, like, funeral home in the city. Uh, there's also in city watches that are happening if there's, like, you know, regular sort of suspicious deaths but when there was like a, a massive terrorist attack with a fireball in a major in, you know in a city street um they've brought them all um uh all the to be identified to the major police station in town um which is like also uh goes up by, against the the city morgue as well so uh, yeah you flash your cards and I don't know if you want to role play getting in, or I'll just say like you know at least with getting through the administrative people, um, you're allow- um, allowed to go through, and you are shown back into um, an office sort of uh, space, which uh, you can see that there is a a door on it that says morgue, and you kind of if you look through, um, kind of peek like open the door a little bit, you see the stairs go down, so it seems to be like a basement area. Um, where they um, keep the um, where they keep all of the bodies to be identified or to be investigated in the case of criminal or to be interrogated. This is also where they come to interrogate. They they do the spells for for um, speak with the dead and um, yeah. So um, a, a cleric a clerical person sort of like uh, hello hello um, um, I'm Miss Appletree. Uh, I understand that uh, you have uh, special permission to do an investigation of um three of the deceased uh and, and did you did you bring your own cleric with you or did you want to um hire the city services cleric who works here um for for us uh, on an hour on, a, on an hourly rate or a per person rate i should say oh, uh, good morning good morning yes just yes we are um uh, what is the plan <laughs> uh I mean, guess we start by interrogating the gnome and then see if the Zantarum are still worth interrogating. Mm, yes, yes, that, that seems to be. And, and we uh, have our own method of doing that one, yes? Well, for one of them at the very least. Mm, fine, fine. 
Uh, so yes, we, we will deal with the one ourselves, uh, depending on how that goes. We will let you know if we need uh, your services. Okay. Um. Do you know how the spell works? Um. I, yeah. I. I know that you. If you've not done it before, I. I would at least for the first time uh, recommend using our our local cleric. He's he's very good. Um. Very compassionate. Um. Very patient, and um. He can also give you advice on on the best ways of getting the information. Thanks for the tip. Um, oh, by the way, it's um, it's a uh, hundred gold, pe- gold a hundred gold dragons um, per spell, per per person. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So, did you want to at least use him for the first intervention, um, get some experience, or did you just want to do it on your own? Uh, by the way, um, you should know that once you've cast the spell. It can't be used again for a week. Yeah, uh, I think ten days is technical. Yes, yes. Remember, yeah. So I have the spell in front of me right now. <laughs> yeah. If if you you know if you mess something up uh, or whatever, it's going to be quite a while before you have a chance mm-hmm. to do it again. So yeah, we need to think out the f- five question in advance. Not just ask it random things once we've cast the spell. Yeah, that's pretty much the advice he. I was going to make sure that he gave you, <laughs> which is if you ask any question, it counts towards your five. <laughs> so okay. the way that I'm going to run this is, um, the person you're talking to can ask you questions. Um, the person that you're talking to can, you know, like talk for. You can have a conversation up to ten minutes, but each question you ask will count against your five. So if you say, can you clarify that? That's going to be a question. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, I mean, I had other advice that, but you guys go. <laughs> Thought of a couple other tips, but that, that you guys do what you want to do. Uh, so before I grab the spell scroll, what are the questions going to ask? First, probably best to ask where T... Do you have that spell? Do you own um, that spell? I have the. Um, I currently still have the. Oh, the, the uh, satchel, right? Oh uh, yeah, satchel, which means I can do up to one third level spell every seven days. Okay. So, so you just reach inside. It's a um, DC fifteen Arcana check, but considering I have like time, I can just keep like rechecking it technically. Okay. It's like a normally it's an action, but that's for like in uh, combat. In, okay. I need to get it. Okay, Being yeah. Like... Gorko is like looking at the spell because he's he's already figured out cloud um, fog cloud now, and he's ready for Thelvar to up him to a different spell now. He's like he's all right. I've, I figured that one out. Like so, he's kind of like looking over your shoulder or, or looking not over your shoulder, but like looking up, trying to look at the words on the speak with dead scroll because he's very interested in that. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. What questions are we gonna ask him? Um... Dalakar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, probably the first question is, how, what was the thing called again? The item that uh, Never Ember said he was gonna bring to us. Uh, the Stone of Galore. So we probably want to ask him about the location of peace. Stone of Galore. Mm, uh, possibly not the location of it, because we kind of know the location of it. Do we? Well, I I think so. we, we know who has it. I mean, that's assuming he had it in his pocket when he got hit by the fireball. Maybe he stashed it somewhere and that guy was shit out of luck as well. Um, we, we've essentially had it confirmed from the kid that he saw. It was actually Fala. Uh, Fala, oh, yeah. Yeah, Great. saw Fala him digging. Saw him digging in the pockets and you found the empty pouch. So, yeah, we know that he got it and licked yeah. it. Hmm. So, the most obvious question is gone, so <laughs> uh, what can we ask him? Hmm. Um, <laughs> Already have an idea of who the killer most likely was. 
maybe ask him <clears throat> how he knew he was there, but he probably doesn't like know that. <sighs> he was part of he that. recognized um the person who attacked him. Yeah. Hmm. He was part of the organ. He was part of that organization, wasn't he? Um, like he's no. part of Centerum, but he just worked for to to pose the open load, right? Yeah. Okay. You can ask about Floxen because he probably knows something more about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, should ask where where the hideout is. I mean, Floxen's hideout is not going to know, but he probably does know about um, Neverember's hideout if he was going to ask us to go go get him or bring something to him at the very least. So, might not be able to that. <coughs> but do we want to know where Neverember's Never Remember's hideout is? I mean, knowing where it is never hurts. It's not priority, no. It's not gonna solve the case at the very least. Um, what if he... Uh, and asking him if he recognizes the guy who, kit, like, attacked him in the alleyway. Yeah, That's if he not... recognizes the construct, yeah, right. Um, then if you just ask, does he recognize him, that doesn't give us more information we wanna... Ask a question which depends on that info, but actually gets more info out. Um, like, who was a construct that attacked you that should cover most of the information? Um, uh, I think definitely need to ask what he wanted us to do with the. MacGuffin. Yes. Mm. Or, mm-hmm. mm. Yeah, but we know he just wants us to bring it to Never Ember, right? Um, yeah. So, no. I think asking him what it does no. would help. Uh, I don't even know that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, we, we kind of know what it does. It opens up the... Uh, Opens the way to the hidden treasure or whatever. Yeah, I believe we could ask him what he knows about the where the treasure is. Mm-hmm. He might not know anything, but uh, and I think that's more the way you ask any of the questions. What do you know about the people that attacked you? What do you know yeah. about the treasure? You know, big encompassing questions that will get lots of information. Mm-hmm. How many questions is that? I just want to know. Like, you guys can take as long as you want. By the way, I was just kind of. I don't think we decided on. Yeah, Any. sure. Okay. Yeah, um, oh, you're I mean, brainstorming I... them now? Okay. Yeah, yeah take um, as long as you want. You guys can... I'm just going to take a little break, so you guys keep talking, yeah? Um, yeah. Okay, you, uh, I'll be right back. So, currently, we have three of them lined up. We can still switch them out, but what do you know about people who attack you? What do you know about Never Ember? What do you know about the treasure? Oh, but me, really know about Never Ember maybe slightly too wide for a guy who worked for him for years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of stories. Um, so maybe make that one a bit more specific. Yeah. Like, do we want him to talk about his son, or do we want him to talk about uh, about the open the, lord? The, the open lord. Uh, so I think we should probably phrase it that we talk. We have it geared more towards um, Never Ember, the open lord. Yeah. And less about. Because for all we know, we could get him to talk. We could end up having him talk about Never Ember, the Sun, of, um, the Open Lord. 
Yeah, I don't remember the name of the open lord. Like, I know his son was Renier, but I do not remember. <laughs> uh, it does I don't think it matters. Um, yeah. So, that's place three decent questions. Mm -hmm. um, we have two more. I would say, oh, I'd say when it comes to, to asking about the former open lord, uh, phrase in such a way as to say, what do you know about the former open lord and his plans in regard to the treasure? Mm -hmm. And I will also be right back. I am back, by the way, but you guys, again, take as long as you need. <laughs> well, we just <laughs> lost so far. <laughs> uh, we still have two questions to figure out. Well, at least two questions. We might want to swap out one of the earlier ones as well. Mm -hmm. um, good. What about who were the other people he was with? I mean, we know there was an theorem, but yeah. Um... I mean, like that's also part of people who attacked him. Um, maybe ask him about Fluxum specifically, because it's kind of weird, because Fluxum is, like, high in the pecking order, so why was he there in person? Uh... I mean, we don't have to use all five. No, we, we just don't. have a max of five. Yeah, and if we ask three, we could have two follow up. Mm hmm. Points. So we probably, yeah. And uh, it might be safer for us to plan to have three with a balance of follow up to just in case we need follow up. That's, My brain stopped. Um. So currently, um. Treasure one is a bet that's already like half follow up because, yeah, that's probably the best idea that we have some follow up open and then maybe also like the question in reserve in case we don't need to use two follow ups. Mm -hmm. So, what do you know about people who attacked you is obviously the big one. Um, to never have a plan for the treasure. Um, Floxum, I would currently make that the third default one. Um, and we can ask ex explicitly about the treasure as well. Mm. Uh, Okie dokie, I'm back. Mm -hmm. Is there an extra category we really want to hit? Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Guess um, we're casting this spell then? Okay, yeah. Um, you can head down, down to the morgue area. <laughs> the assistant, Miss Appleby, like walks you down. Um, and takes you into a room um, and says, like, you know, um, like serious crimes unit, <laughs> whatever. Uh, and on the table, there's more than one um, deceased person, humanoid, lying uh, out there. Um, she says, oh, um, they've all had um, quiet repose and um, we've tried to, you know, um, if, if if they've been damaged, we've tried to do a little bit to make them look a little bit better. But uh, um, uh, who did you want to start with? Um, it was uh, was it a gnome? Like, yes. Yeah. Okay. Him first. Right, she sort of like um looks at the the names on the sort of like a, a paper, uh, sort of like a fi uh, sort of like information uh, on each of the tables. And uh, says, "Oh yes, um, this is this is him. This is um Delacar you were looking for. Um, he's right here. Um, I will. I'll just, I'll just leave you, leave you in peace. You can have your conversation. Um, yeah. and yeah, she she exits the room. Okay, guess uh, I'm casting speak with dead. Okay." Um, I think it just happens, right? There's no rolls or anything. Uh, yeah, no rolls, no. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so, yes, you watch as Clue, um, reads out, uh, Goko, or Gorko is just, like, you know, again, like, looking up, trying to follow along as you're doing it. Um, you see him, he sort of, like, reads out the spell, and his hands move a little bit, like, as our verbal component, or, sorry, a somatic component as well. And, um, you, you see, sort of like, uh, the, which the mage arm, sh mage armor shimmer of Hibara there's a little bit of like almost like a frisson that goes through the body and um you see the the corpse suddenly sit up and the sheet slides off of his face and there's a very dead gnome with very dead eyes sitting upright what do you know about the people who attacked you can everyone hear me yep 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 you're back yeah. Yep, yep, good. Uh, uh, who is this? Who are you? Friends of Renier. Uh, how do, how do I know that you're friends of him? Me, if you already know about us. Um, we are, uh, what was the party name again? <laughs> the party uh, to be named Paul. later, PNTC. PNTC. Or named later, L. P or party name to come. Party name to come. That was it. PNTC. Yes. <laughs> 2C. 2C, yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. I was on my way. I was on my way to bring it to you when I was attacked. I was being chased by the, by the, by the Zentarum. I was being chased by three Zentarum. I don't know who any of them were. They were after the stone. Mm hmm Did you know the construct that f used fireball on you? I didn't know it was fireball that got me. I just remember running, one of them grabbed me, and then suddenly there was a whoosh and pain, and something grabbed my ankle and pulled me down, and then blackness. Hmm. What do you know about Never Ember's plan about a treasure? Well, um, the Open Lord has a bunch of uh, dragons that he's hidden in the city. And the idea was to keep it safe because he needed it to reconstruct Neverwinter. But now it's stuck in Waterdeep uh, because he's not allowed back in the city. <sighs> Where is the treasure? Only the Stone of Galore knows where the treasure is. That's four, by the way. Yep, I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Somebody's keeping count. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. I, I need to watch my words because I almost accidentally asked the question. <laughs> and I don't want to do that. Um, you can walk away from the table and talk to your party members and it not okay. count as a question. So you don't have yeah. to, you know, be silent. You guys can actually mm -hmm. talk between questions. So. <laughs> okay, uh, team huddle. <laughs> yeah, uh, team huddle. You can have a team huddle. That's fine. Uh, so do I just ask about Flux? Because I feel like we're missing some crucial information about the actual, you know, Fireball. I don't think he's going to have the answer about the fireball, though. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm also afraid of. I mean, but, it's a fireball. They're not that complex. I'm mean, more yeah, about the guy firing it, to be honest. Uh, I don't think he knows anything about that person, that thing. Um... Yeah, that's going to be our other person, our other that's interviewee. I mean, I don't think there's a term going to particularly know either. Um, guess I'll uh, ask him about Floxon. Oh, yay. Mm. 
probably gonna need to interrogate the Zontarum as well. But uh, that's be a hundred call, unfortunately. So uh, I guess I'm turning back to the gnome. What do you know about Floxen? Who's Floxen? The leader of the Zentarum faction that was chasing you. I was working for the Zentar. I was working for a Xanathar guild, so I don't know anything about the Zentarum. And I'm out of questions, so I can't ask why I knew about it. Uh, well, guess we're done here. <laughs> and he flops back on the table. Ah. That was... That was mostly useless. You guys should have paid for the advisor. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. No, it's your it's your game. You guys do what you want. You guys do exactly what you want. So, uh, I said I don't think the advisor would have helped us a lot. All right. So, um, yeah, you learned that he was working for um, Xanathar. Um, he didn't know. Uh, anything about the fireball um, or the thing that hit him. Um, you now know that never um, Ember was basically trying to embezzle money from the city of Waterdeep to help his restoration of Never Winter, which is where he currently, by the way, so the po so the politics is, yeah, he was open lord of Waterdeep. He didn't really get along with people in Waterdeep, so he went to Never Winter, and then he ended up spending more time in Never Winter than he was in Waterdeep. And then a bunch of people got really mad at him, and he was going to get kicked out as the open lord. Um, and so... Yeah, now he's actually running Never Winter, and he's like restoring the city. He's actually was like a much better leader of Never Winter than he ever was of Waterdeep because he can just do what he wants and boss everybody around. And he, but he's actually like bringing the city back and organizing it and making it into more of a city. So I think that was I'm not sure what the first question was. I forget now, but. <sighs> Yeah, so what do we do now, guys? Mm. Follow the lead on the constructs. That's about all we can. Okay. Yeah, so are you um, gonna then leave the morgue and try to head over to the church or are you gonna head back to the tavern um yeah what do you guys want to do how late is it right now uh so let's see you've been up since five in the morning got done at nine uh i'd say it, like between the fights and covering up another murder in the city if <laughs> under the nose of a very lazy uninterested city watch person uh and talking to otto was about noonish get over to this part of town. So let's say it's like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Noon? Yeah, we can probably continue our investigation then. No reason to head back just yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, yeah, you leave the city morgue and <clears throat> you head over uh, back to your cart and uh, ask the driver to take you to the, um, the church of... Let me find the exact name. Because it starts with a G, but it's kind of awkward. Ah, the the House of Inspired Hands, which uh, sits on the corner of Sea Watch Street and Shark Street in the Sea Ward. Yeah. If I uh, let's, uh, I, you guys can look that up if you want. Yeah. <laughs> See where you're headed. Um, and yeah, you you go on through the streets. Uh, all of you are kind of mulling over what what you might have learned, kind of wondering. What the hell was Dalakar doing with working with the um with the Xanathar Guild? What was that all about? And how does that then connect with you know the the whole thing? Um and yeah, as you come up onto uh, the corner of Sea Watch and Shark Street, you see the House of Inspired Hands, which looks like some sort of cross between a temple and a workshop. The symbol of Gond, which is a tooth cogged with four spokes is displayed prominently um, all over the building uh, as you guys uh, descend from the cart and are approaching the 
um, the building. Uh, everyone, roll me a perception check. Ooh, okay. Robara's paying attention. Mm -hmm. That's Alvaz, and I can roll another one. For our wishes? We're basically the same one for our wishes. I'll okay. roll for Gorgor. with advantage. Yep, go ahead. Yep. <laughs> 12. Okay. <as> well. <laughs> and there's Gorkos. Okay. Um, and where's Clue? Ah, yep. Clue. All right. Uh, Clue and Tibara. Um, you notice as you're walking toward the building, you see a glimmer uh, that catches your eye on the roof. And when you look up, it's a little bit difficult because like, of where the sun is, but you see the silhouette of a humanoid shape perching on the rooftop. As you watch it, it suddenly extends its arm and it releases what looks to be like a tiny metal sparrow into the sky. And as you're watching it, this, this metal, little metal sparrow just starts flying around and doing loops. And the party, as, as you two are watching this, as you're walking toward the building, um, it's kind of like coming closer and overhead. And then one of its arms just kind of like suddenly jerks and stops moving and just seems to be stuck in place. And it starts to do this um, spiral downwards and it's coming right at you. Um, everyone who wasn't paying attention, do me a dexterity saving throw. Um, firebolt. <laughs> uh, you don't have time, to, like, at this point. Like, I need okay. everyone, yeah, to do a dexterity saving roll. All right, uh, Thelvar, Mara, yep. Um, and, oh, Gorko, also. Oh, I'm getting there. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> oh, Gorko. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He doesn't, he doesn't get out of the way. Um, and actually, he's just, like, uh, still trying to, like, go over the words that he was remembering from the scroll. And uh, as you guys are walking, all of you manage to move out of the way and clear a path. And this little metal bird goes and just thunks him right in the head. Um, Mara, can you roll me a 1d4? And do a 1d4 minus 1. One for me or yeah, for, for Gorko. Gorko? For Gorko, but if you can roll a 1d4 okay. minus one for him. One d4. Yep. Oh, just so the first one. So it, yeah, it, it, oh. it, conks him, it conks him on the head. It does three points of damage. So you see, like, it, it leaves, it's going to leave a welt. He's like, ah, 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 ah. Um, but on impact, the little, the metal bird just, like, completely shatters um, into pieces and falls apart. Um, as this happens, um, uh, Hibara and Clue, no, yeah, Clue, you guys knew where to look. Um, as you, as it, you notice after it hits Gorko, you look back up at the creature, which sort of, like, jumps up and sees you guys and uh, then disappears. Um, it looks like it opens up some sort of door and slides into the roof of the House of Inspired Hands. Hmm. That wasn't particularly <laughs> subtle, now was it? <laughs> yeah, so, um, yes, yeah, so you're in basically the front door of the building. I think we're at the right place. <laughs> 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 Mara's gonna just bust in. Um, I mean, not kick down the door, but kick down the door. It's a church. <laughs> yeah, as you kick open the door, there's a lot of people. Like, there's nobody manning the door, or you know, or yeah. standing there. But uh, everyone's like, "What the hell? What's going on?" And just like seem very startled. Are there stairs? Um, I need to roll. I roll yeah, for there's that? lots of stairs. I had to, you just bust, busted into it. <laughs> um, so what you see when you walk in is a, a basically a massive big hall with two dozen marble pedestals um, with lots of statues. So this is like the main doors of it are the areas of worship. It's the front, you know, like it's like coming into any other holy building where there's sort of like there's a little bit of a 
an area for you know, cleaning off your shoes or whatever else, and then it opens up into the main temple building. So you you see a, a great hall um, and these sort of like metal pe pedestal things, but you don't see a staircase. That's that's obvious. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, one of the temple people um, walk up to you and he says, uh, "Hello, can uh, can we help you?" Uh, actually, uh, we were wondering uh, about some of your work on Construct. Oh, uh, well, I guess the best person to talk to about that would be Sister Valletta. Um, if you can wait here for just a moment, I will go get her. Mm, fine, fine. Okay. Uh, so he disappears, and uh, without introducing himself or anything, he's just like, you know, sees people all the time. And... Um, when he returns, he is with a dragonborn uh, bra of bronze dragon ancestry, um, and he introduces her as uh, Sister Valletta, and she says, um, hello, welcome to the House of Inspired Hands. I understand that you are interested in learning more about um, our constructs. Indeed we are. Yes, well, how can I help you? Well, uh, we were wondering uh, if there is anybody working on, let's say, sentient constructs, anything that can make its own decisions? Oh, um, no, no, not not that I'm aware of. That doesn't sound at all familiar to me of, of anybody here at the... At the house who's working on, on anything like that, all of ours are, you know, just sort of animated the uh, things that um are 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 uh, you know, run instructed by other other beings to do simple tasks, but certainly not to, to make their own decisions. Can we see your workshop? Um well I mean the whole temple is a bit of a workshop. I can take you through here. Any and... upper floor workshops? Uh, upper floors? No, no, there's residents up on the upper floors, uh, but we don't, uh, the workshops are downstairs, it's easier to bring in the materials and carry things out, you know, it's it's only living quarters in the upstairs. Mm. Can I have a tour of your living quarters, then? Uh, <laughs> That's a weird question, Ibarra. Ibarra, so you're sounding funny you now. <laughs> Uh, I'm just wondering, these constructs you're making, how long is the range on some of these? Um, uh, well, I, I don't quite understand. They can, if they're, you know, they can travel for quite a distance if, uh, I don't understand what you mean by the range. Like, I mean, they can walk wherever we you know, send them off to go. I mean, if you want to control one, do you need to be close to it, or...? Oh, well, it depends. I mean, the older models, they usually require somebody to go inside and, and organize them. Most oftentimes that, you know, the um, the ones that are done at the various Waterdeep parades um, have some sort of mechanic inside them just to be careful, make sure that um, they don't step if someone runs out into the road or, or anything like that. They, they, you know, do have that sort of work. Mm, Workmen or workwomen. About... <clears throat> What about the human-sized ones? Um, well, I mean, the only human-sized one that I'm aware of is uh, is our friend Nim, who lives here in the temple. But he never leaves. He's not so allowed to leave. he lives in the resident quarters you have. Yes, he's on not on the a second floor. He's not allowed to leave the temple grounds. He's here um, purely to uh, work on, uh, to, to be here uh, with us. Um, yes, Nim. Would it be possible to speak with this Nim? Um, uh, well, he doesn't really speak. You see, he and I have developed a, a special sort of language. He makes signs that I can interpret into common for you, though. Hmm. Sounds sentient, then, doesn't it? Or who controls this Nim? Well, that's why we don't let him leave the temple grounds. He's um he's kept here. Um, he was a, a gift 
to the temple, but um, we don't allow him to leave. He stays here with us. So he controls himself, but he's confined to um, our property. I don't think y'all have done a good job of confining him. Ah, no. Who, no. Who, who, gifted, who gifted him to you? Um, I have to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all asking the wrong question. <laughs> um, oh, he was given as a gift from a visiting Lantanese wizard who has been creating um, inventions. Uh, sorry, sorry. So he's um, he was given to us, yes, as a gift, and um, and he's uh, he's actually called a, a nimble right. It's short. That's why we call him Nim for short. Um, he was yes. He's been living here with us for a, a few months now. Is there any possible uh, possibility that there are more like him in Waterdeep? I'm unaware. No, I've never seen anything like Nim before. Like I said, he was quite the unusual creation and was the was a gift to us. Um, most of the uh, constructs, or the automatons we make, are you know big and um, meant for uh, ceremonial purposes. Um, and uh, Nim oh. Nim is a uh, is quite. He can't communicate. He's also quite. Um, perhaps somebody might kidnap him or try to sell him off or do something, and so we keep him here to protect him. Or maybe try to liberate him. Sorry? Nothing, nothing. Um, but yes, it would be rather mm, nice if we could speak with him. Uh, sure, sure. And uh, she takes you upstairs um to the the living quarters and um when you get up to the, she takes you up to a a, a a spiral staircase um leading up to the attic but when you get there she's like oh this is this is unusual this is a this is a new lock somebody's put a new lock on here and she takes out her key she tries to put the key in the lock, and it's like, I, I can't. Uh, uh, this key doesn't fit. Uh, yeah, seems let to... me add it for a second. Oh. He just kind of walks up to the lock and gets his lock picks out. Sure, sure. Yeah, go ahead and give me a roll. <laughs> yeah, never mind, my friend. He's a bit of a locksmith. <laughs> sure, that's what we'll call it. Locksmith. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, it was a DC twenty as well. <laughs> Destroying locks, Jesus! Yeah, you are. Um, so uh, as you walk in, um, it, yeah, you manage to get the door, and as you open up the door, um, you see a very short, sort of squat-looking humanoid creature, um, that's made in a dark sort of metal um not like an iron but it looks like it's uh been sort of like painted in some way and it it just um jumps up off of what looks as like sort of like a bed and and hides from you. uh and valetta says nim nim don't oh my goodness this I, I, what are you doing with a new lock on your door this is these people aren't here to hurt you but you can't be locking us out you know we're here to hurt you and he stands up and he makes signs and and she says, Oh, you know, there's a reason why we put a lock on your door that we can get into. I know you want your privacy, but if you want that, if there are discussions about privacy, then we have to talk about boundaries. You don't just go making up your own locks. He makes some more signs at her and she's like, Oh, well, these people are here to see you. Um, she said, the, um, I, can, I can help translate um, from what he says. Um, did you want to talk to him? Ask him questions or something? Yes, please. Mr. Nim, are you able to write? He makes signs and he says um, he likes to work with his hands, but not for writing, only for working on things. Mm. I mean, installing a new lock on your own, it's rather impressive, really. 
s- makes a symbol and and she looks at you guys and she said he says yeah i'm cool <laughs> yes you are you are a super cool being i assume you have been tinkering with other stuff as well um don't super suspicious clue <laughs> be cool dude uh, I, I'm just being nice. Just mm-hmm. asking about his hobbies. Just, uh, You're the one being suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Um. Don't. So he makes a sign and says, uh, and she goes, uh, he's saying that, yes, he's been tinkering. Nim, what have you been tinkering with? And he makes a few signs at her and um, tells uh, uh, Nim, <laughs> you know you're not supposed to do that. What? When did this happen? And he makes some more signs at her. And what did you do with it? And then he makes some more signs at her. And where is it now? And he makes some more signs at her. It's like, I, you know the rules, Nim. I, I'm so disappointed in you. Is he talking about the bird? I am. I am not. I. It's no. I'm not. It's not just that I'm angry. It's that I'm disappointed. We trusted you. Can can we get? Some of this conversation, because as much as I like one-sided conversations, I'm confused. He told you about the bird he made, didn't he? You made a bird as well? And he, like, makes some more signs. (laughs) Just like, Nim! Wait! Uh, The thing that hit Goku in the head? That was so cool! Uh, what? You you made... uh, I'm so, so... I guess it's a, somewhat of our own fault. You see, Nim is explaining to me, even though it's not going to make a difference, and she yells, she's like, excuse me for just a second. It's like, um, Aletta, Verana, come up here. Nim is grounded. He has no tools. He has all his inventions taken what? away for a week. No. Come on, no, just no. cut him some slack, And he okay. is going to be grounded. She's like, all right. No. No. Anarchy. Anarchy. So Nim, Anarchy. Nim is looking very sad. He he goes over and he sits on his bed. Nim, and, come over come here on. and chant with me. Anarchy. 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 <laughs> he starts bouncing Anarchy. on the bed, but he's kind of depressed. Anarchy. And Valetta's like, Anarchy. "Wait, let me let me explain the whole story. It's not really about the bird. You see, Nim told me that." He was, even though that there are a lot of humans around him, and he has a lot of human company, that there wasn't anything like him. And so for the last several weeks, he's secretly been working on another nimble right. One to be a friend to him, one to be a companion. He built the nimble right secretly, despite our rules about creating sentient constructs here. He knows that he's special. And he knows that he's protected here so that people don't abuse and hurt him. But this friend that he built... Is that what you call it? The friend that he built um, escaped out of the attic roof and he's not come back and he's not seen him. (sighs) Well, that explains some things at the very least. So um, as you guys are talking, the two acolytes are coming in and they're kind of packing up um, Nim's work area and they're packing up his um, what else did he like oh, uh, um, yeah other stuff on his workstation and stuff um, why don't each of you give me a perception check Mara's still chanting Attica Attica <laughs> Attica yeah. and she, her perception is completely blocked by that. Yes. Attica. Attica. Uh, Thelvar? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and Gorko is along with uh, along for the ride. <laughs> okay. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Thelvar can't see it. Highest with a ten. Woo. <laughs> We can't and, see anything through. And the two followers. Attica. Attica. Um, all right, yeah. So. <laughs> I wish to see something, though. All right, as you guys are um, all sort of like discussing this, um, Nim starts to point at uh, his desk and make signs at Valletta. 
She said, Possibly. What does it do? He points again at something on his desk and he makes a bunch of signs. Um, and she walks over and she grabs this really unusual looking thing. Um, part of it is almost like a sort of like a, a handle, not like a knife handle, more like a, like a like maybe like a dagger handle. And then there's a whole bunch of um, hooks and eyes and and kind of stuff. And then at the top of it, there's a little um, green and red umbrella. It's about the length of a wand, and it's a very unusual looking thing. And he points at it, and he's he's um, uh, making a lot of symbols. And he said. Well, all right. This, if these nice people can maybe help us out, and I, maybe you will not be grounded for the full week. But for the moment, you knew you were not supposed to be making any other sentient creatures. You know that there are evil people in the world who would take advantage of them and either sell them into slavery or make them into some sort of circus freak that the people could charge money for and exploit them. So you have to hit, sit and think about the consequences of what you've done. And hopefully these nice people who've come here asking questions can help. All right, well, I'm going to take them downstairs. And you are not to look at your tools or think about doing any more tinkering. And you can go out on the attic roof, but no birds. Look at what you did. And she points at Gorko, who's got a, like a big lump on his head. Don't use Gorko as an example. He wasn't paying attention. <laughs> All right. So she says, please, uh, everyone, come downstairs. Please no, I do want to stay. Mara's, like, pouting at this point. No, I want to stay with him. He doesn't <laughs> deserve to be chained up and locked away like some kind of circus freak. I'm staying here. Attica. 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 All right, well, you can stay up there. The rest of the party, oh, she's going to start to descend down the stairs um, and, uh, and head, head back, back um, down toward the, the main church area. <laughs> <laughs> All right, when uh, the, the uh, Gorko is going to stay with you, so the two of you are on the bed, and uh, yeah, Gorko is going to start jumping on the bed, and Nim is going to kind of jump on the bed a little bit too. Um, but um, Valletta says... <sighs> Look, um, sentient nimble rights, they don't know right from wrong. They don't have alignments. They're not good, they're not bad, they're not, they're not lawful, they're not chaotic. And they are empty vessels, and in the wrong hands, they can be made into assassins or weapons or something very dangerous. It's, it's why that we, we can't let Nim, he's got the whole grounds to, he can walk um, here, he can go outside, he can... Just go into the library, and he's free to use tools as long as he doesn't do anything like he did. But look, that wayward nimble right that he he created, our House of the Inspired Hands will pay you five hundred gold pieces to destroy it. Um, and if you return with proof of its dis destruction, we will pay you five hundred gold for it. Um, in addition. We also have some useful things that we make here that can be used by non nimble right beings, and you will have your pick of any of our treasures. Each of you will have one um, if you are also able to do this for us. What Nim told me in an attempt to negotiate to get his grounding cut down from a week to three days is that he anticipated the idea that it might be a problem for his nimble right in case they ever got separated. And so he created this, and she holds up. I'll try to get a picture of it. He says, it's a nimble right detector. And what he says it will do is that if you are within 500 feet of a nimble right, then it will start to whir or make noise or whatever. Um, magic items? Let's see. I'm looking to see if it's nimble right detractor, but I'm not seeing. I will. F I will find a picture of it. It's just not showing up. Wait, did she? Is she saying this within earshot of Mara, or is she saying this? No, because Mara. No, we're downstairs. Mara's okay, that's where we're downstairs now. Okay. Yeah. Because if Mara heard the 
they have no um they're not oh. evil they're not evil or anything um yeah that would be a problem <laughs> yeah no no she's still upstairs on the bound doing attica on the bed um okay good uh so yeah um ah this is annoying uh, they don't give me the artwork because it's in the book right Hector. uh okay i think i might be able to get you a picture ah yes okay so i'm gonna give you uh a picture to a nimble right detector in the uh, in, in the chat so you can have a look at it so you can see it uh what it looks like oh and okay. she says uh okay. yes um so if you are able to track down this rogue nimble right hopefully it hasn't done any harm or anything already well, that's um but yes when it's activated and it comes within 500 feet of a nimble right other than nim he's made himself invisible then the umbrella begins to spin and whir and click. And the spinning and whirring and clicking accelerates as the distance to the target um, lessens, reaching a, uh, a, a, a maximum velocity um, within 30 feet. So with, when you're in worth, within 30 feet of it, it won't get any less. Um, there's, there's a nimble right loose in the city. You can please track it down and find it before someone does something very dangerous with it. We would be very very grateful yes we will definitely do that and we can discuss um compensation for our labors once it is done oh uh, well thank you for bringing this to our attention no, that is quite okay all right um, oh, yes, uh, just to um, mention, it was about a month ago, Nim said, that the creature ran off. So who, who knows what might have happened, what it might, someone might have gotten it to do. In the meantime, I, I shudder to think. Hopefully it's taken in by a family of tinkerers who, who only want the best for it. <laughs> mm, indeed. Hmm. Okay. All right, so uh, yes, um, she says, well, thank you, and uh, have a good day. If you want to stay and look around, I'm, I'm happy to give you a tour of the temple. We have many fascinating um, in, you know, uh, bits of uh, lore and uh, tinkering here if you want, but of course, if you need to get on with your day, I very much understand. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I will just go and retrieve my friend, and we will be out of your hair. And uh, Thelvar just stalks off and goes up uh, to Nim's room, uh, to Mara. Um, trust me, girl, I feel pretty much the same way as you, but for now, we have other work to do. Nim Mara looks at him and then looks at um Nim, no. Nim. Am, and then I'm, goes I am very not happy with your situation here. I understand how much of a prisoner you must feel and how isolating it must be to be confined in a place like this. We will deal with your erstwhile companion and then we will do what we can for you. Do you understand me? He gestures at you with many gestures, but you can't understand what. Mara looks at Nim and goes, Someday, Ducky, I'm going to come back for you. And we will wreak havoc on those that have wronged you. Any, again, in, in, insight check can Thalva uh, kind of work it out? Uh, yeah, I mean, he seems, uh, you can tell maybe a little bit by the body language that um, he, he seems, um, he's not saying no. You know, he's not, uh, he's not like saying, get away from me. Um, uh, you, you can't, again, he doesn't really have any expressions. Um, so what you can see is that uh, what you'd be able to glean is that he's not refusing your offer. Very well. 
I can't understand everything that you are saying, but I believe we understand each other. Take care of yourself, Nim, and hopefully we will see each other soon. He, um, Lara, don't worry, also. Ducky. We'll have we'll be coming back for him very soon. As the as you guys are leaving, um, Nim gets off the bed and he runs over and he like tugs on both of your cloaks, uh, and then sort of like holds it stay like uh, pulls out his little metal hands, um, to have you stand right there, and then you see him uh disappear uh, uh under the bed, and when he um starts to come forward, what you see is that he's got a secret toolbox under his bed that they missed. <laughs> <laughs> and then he pushes oh, it back so under the bed. <laughs> Very clever. So name. smart. Make sure you keep it well hidden. Sort of nods at you and then waves goodbye. Mm. Take care, Nim. Now <laughs> that is how you properly hide a secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So the other people are waiting downstairs, uh, sort of looking around. Yeah. As, as um. Um, Hibara and Clue are, are waiting for Thelvar, um, uh, Gorko and Mara to come back down. You, you can see that, um, you're, you're like looking at the marble uh, pedestals um, that dot along the inside. And um, you see a four foot working model of a clock tower that uh, looks to ring. It says that it rings the top of every hour. You see a wooden flying machine that has wings that flap. When it becomes airborne, it does a little, like, hop and becomes airborne. Um, mm -hmm. You see also there's a functional walking helmet equipped with a small articulated arms and hands that slap the wearer if he or she falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, yes, you see a miniature model of a red submarine shaped like a manta ray, which has a brass plate affixed to its pedestal that reads, The Scarlet... Marnapo um sorry, Marp Marpinoth, Lantanese submer sub sub submersible? Ah, right, it's hyphenated in a weird way. Um Lantanese submersible launched in fourteen eighty-nine DR. You see all these little um amazing inventions as you're killing time waiting for Belvar and Mar. Mara sees the 14 and like, but doesn't like, doesn't see the rest of it. And then just kind of goes 1492 <laughs> Columbus sailed the ocean blue and committed genocide. You're channeling from another plane of existence again. <laughs> Columbus? Never heard of him. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <sighs> Mara, you really are a syringe one, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> So, the barra, we are leaving. Ooh, talking with authority now, aren't we? La 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 la, fourteen ninety two. So yeah, Mara goes skipping out, <laughs> and the rest of you walk out uh, with your nimble right detector. Now, who's got that? Um, I assume Clue's holding on to that. Okay. Uh, we don't hand it off to Mara to put in the bag of holding until it vanishes and just kind of drops everything on the floor. <laughs> no, I think Clue's gonna keep it on him, mostly because he's the most likely one to be, like, scouting if we do decide to scout. Oh, and probably to run after said, um, Niffling? Niffling? I mean, yeah, he does like to chase people, doesn't he? Yes, yeah. he does. They're, yes, they're called... Especially when we say don't go after it. <laughs> Nimble rights, they're called. Nimble rights. Yeah. Um, yeah, so at this point, you know, by the time all of these shenanigans happen, it's getting to be dusk. It's about 5.30 in the afternoon, going on to the evening now. And because it's autumn, you know, the days are shorter, and so it's getting darker. The horse and carriage and your rider are sat waiting, you know, at the front of the street um, as where you got dropped off to walk over to the House of Inspired Hands. And, uh, yeah, you, the five of you can clamber on board. And where would you like to go now? Home, James. <laughs> okay, um, because I had a berry and I'm not hungry. Mm -hmm. um, 
everybody else should be hungry because um, mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but we all had breakfast at 5 a.m. It is now like 2. Oh, it's How like are we all not? 6. It's going on 536. Yeah. So. Okay. How are you all not hangry? How is no one trying to kill each other yet? Maybe that explains. Maybe they are hangry. That's the reaction you got at the temple. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I don't know about you two, um, but for speaking on behalf of myself and Mara, we are not too happy with slavery, and we will not be letting this stand. Do either of you have any objections? I mean, I'm not pro-slavery, but at the same time, we do need to have a plan here. I mean, it's not a lie. It's a thing. Unless it's powered by something like, I don't know, an orphan heart. (laughs) But who would do that? It is not just a thing. Non-sentient beings don't cower in fear at the sight of their captors. Eh, nope. Depends on how you program them, really. That's a then it's not sentient. Out. Clue. I will find a way to cut off every single one of your fingers. Every single one, Ducky. Do not test me. Oh, you're thinking I'm the one testing you. Addica! Addica! And the funny thing is, is they don't understand what that even means. <laughs> I'm still channeling another universe. I also will note that when you guys went barging in, Nim had no idea who you were. <laughs> so he did it, but he absolutely loved me because all things love Mara. <laughs> I, I know one thing that doesn't love Mara. Yeah, but the yeah, point- Clue because Clue is going to be afraid of her because she's going to use him as a pinata. <laughs> Clue at no point has been actually afraid of Mara. Yeah, but she's gonna at one point use him as an active pinata, be like, I'm going to knock the jelly beans out of you. I'd like to see her try. Ooh, once I get my long sword, like and I can actually use it. <laughs> jelly beans. I could just like perpetually stay out of your range if we're actually in a fight. Like I have bonus <laughs> action dash. <laughs> Uh, anyway, moving on! <laughs> so, yes, you guys uh, get on uh, the cart and you head back to Skull Skull Alley, back to the tavern. And mm-hmm. uh, at the, by the time you get there, it is night. The um, uh, Jarvis is inside having lit uh, you know, lanterns. And there's a warm glow coming from inside the building as you pull up in the cart. The temperatures as well as the sun are going down. Uh, as you walk in again, Thelvar, you feel the relief of getting away from your purse, from having carried it with you all day. And you can see that downstairs now, um, the entire floor has been properly, has been newly sanded. And um, most of the area um, toward the back of the bar is been blocked off because that was done the most recently. But um, it's got now a nice sort of black lacquer on it um the sort of the vision of the place is coming alive and as well the bar area has been polished and um yes uh jarvis is um playing a game of tic-tac-toe with lif um behind the counter um as uh, because you know it's getting to be about six o'clock in the evening now um as you guys walk in jarvis says um oh uh, it's so good to see you um uh uh, we've been making good progress on the tavern, and as well, we've had a delivery from um, the the uh, cloth makers guild. Um, there's we've also organized a few things at the shop. So uh, all of you have um, new fresh bedding and down um, duvets and covers in your rooms and some new furniture as well. So, uh, yes, I was just saying until you arrived back from your day out to say that this had been delivered for you. Um, they reach underneath the bar counter and there is a box that when they bring it up, sort of, you can hear tinkling of bottles kind of knocking into each other gently. Um, this came from the Blackstaff's office. 
are becoming <laughs> quite popular um, with some very powerful people in Waterdeep very quickly, if I do say so myself. Um, yes, uh, so this arrived from for you earlier in the day. Um, is there anything else um, that I can do for you before I head home for the night? Oh, um, the Bobs. They were wondering if they could have um, the attic room. I don't know if we've officially talked about it, but they they yes. would like to yes move in and and stay in. Yes, the... <laughs> they can have it. <laughs> All right, excellent. I assume we can discuss rent later, but yes, they can have it. All right, I, I assumed that you would be okay with it, so I had them move their cots and uh, make up their own um, bedding in their rooms as well. So I, I offered them one room each in the upstairs, but they prefer bunk beds. So they're working out some way of building their cots into bunk beds in the upstairs oh. attic rooms. Tell them that they can go ahead. They could go ahead and um, on the bar. Like we we will figure out a way to pay for it. Okay. Um, uh, but they can get lumber and whatnot and have it paid for so that they don't have to figure out how to get the lump, like build their cots or whatever. But get make themselves some nice bunk beds. Okay. Well, like, with the... like cedar wood or something. Yeah, they're, they, they're getting to be pretty friendly with the carpenters. I'm sure that they would help them design a, a very suitable bunk bed arrangement for the two of them upstairs. They do like to hang out together, though. Delightful. Is there anything else, for us, or madame? Yes, I would like you to <clears throat> uh, get me everything you can about ordinances on... Uh, slavery, indentured servitude, and false imprisonment uh, in regards to the city that you can. Oh, uh, okay. The uh, information in the next few days. Uh, okay, um, well... Uh, Delvar, you... Ducky? I'm sorry to interrupt you, Jarvis, dear. Mm -hmm. um, you are aware that they're pro the way they probably get around the ordinance is they probably don't even consider him a living being, and thus... He does not count. Well, it's not a living being. Is someone enslaved a skeleton? It is a living being. He's a, he's a sentient being, not a living being. There is a difference. However, that is how they probably get around it. And thus, and as she's like talking about this difference, a little bane in Mara's forehead is going off. So I don't know why we want to go around it. It's AKA we just kidnapped. I mean, if we're kidnapping him, I don't know if it's going to turn out a lot better than this current situation. Well, we On don't the... kidnap. It's called we kidnap with the, like, with his permission. Uh, and then we don't lock him up. He would still be on the run. We need an actual plan for what to do once he's out of there. Well, we will figure that out, but I don't think we go around, like, try to go around the law because there is no law protecting him since he's a one-of-a-kind being. Uh, you can screw it a lot if you make a convincing enough argument. Uh, Jarvis is like, I'm, can I, uh, sorry to interrupt him. I, I know of my, in my adventuring days, uh, someone in my party um, <clears throat> what had a job to destroy constructs. Uh, and there was no legal repercussions in Waterdeep because legal because constructs aren't considered legal persons in, within the bounds of the city. Uh, you can kill us. You can go around and smash any of the large automatons, and all you'll get is property damage. But uh, no, they're they're not considered legal persons. Uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, my own feelings on it, in terms of the law. That's. Well, that's what my uh, the person who um, charged my friend who was a property damage issue, but it was never brought up as murder. Mm. <laughs> but this is not a simple automaton. It is of the same level and should be treated with the same rights as any other golem or Wait. forged. Wait, but Silver, I think we fig I think we figured out our loophole, though. Mm hmm. How did they receive him? Like, was he a gift? of property or was he a gift of like as like a pet or something because if he was a gift as property then we can make the argument that he should be treated as a golem since he does have sentient will mm. well, you could. so 
You could certainly take this up with the masked lords of Waterdeep to try to change the law. And uh. once we figure out the dragon thing, we could possibly get the what's what what's her bucket's name? Uh, I'm sorry, really... yeah, who's whose names? Bu buckets. The, the, the black black lady. Oh, Vajra. Uh. So far, uh, yeah, the black staff. Black staff. Black staff. Yeah. We could get the black staff on our our side. Mm-hmm. So uh, you're spending a lot of potential political power on a single construct here. You know that, right? You know what? Screw it. He is not just a construct. He is a living, thinking being who also happens to be a care. construct. So why don't you just break it? Then it's trash, and then you can just fix it, and then it's yours. I mean, no. it's not the worst plan I've heard all night. He could, we could, he, Delvar, before you lose a, a blood vessel, we can have him pretend to be broken. Uh, but then again, uh, the best base, best suited to fix him is where he is currently. We need him to be broken in a way that we have an excuse to move him, which would be hard. No, like, we take him out, like, say, like, we ask to, like, let him go adventuring with us because we need him for some reason, and then he gets broken, and then they can't fix him because he's a one-of-a-kind, and so we ask to keep him. He's not really one-of-a-kind. We have another one. I mean, he can make another one of himself. Although, admittedly, if the other one looks enough like him but isn't sentient, like, that's a well, no, he is sentient, too. That's I mean, is that confirmed? No, we don't know. I need something harder than coffee. Slash, I need water. <laughs> Lyft mm. uh, goes, uh, goes into the kitchen and comes back. You see, you know, like, with a ghostly hand, sets down a glass of water in front of you. Thank you. Also, you guys should eat. You haven't eaten all day. Fair point. <laughs> For maybe um, this is all just because of Talva's blood sugar. No. Tal well, I mean, I haven't eaten all day, but I I'm mean, not hungry. You hear, a, also you. You hear like a <laughs> footsteps on the st uh, coming down uh, and you see the two bobs. Um, the one that doesn't say anything kind of smiles. The um, talky, talkative Bob, he's got a copy of the Daily Trumpet um, under his hand and uh, under his arm as he's walking by. He's, uh, as, he, as he's going like, past you as you're all having this argument, he's like, we're about to make pizzas. Mm, you guys I, want some? Definitely. Very, very nice. All right. And he takes the newspaper and he sets it on the bar counter as he uh, kind of like goes into the kitchen. And uh, as you can see, it says Fireball and Troll Skull Alley on the front of it. Um, and then the side article is The Black Viper Strikes Again? Question mark. And underneath that is Dragons Sighted where we have all the info on page four. <laughs> Mara, she kind of like shuffles everybody towards like somewhere towards food and picks up the newspaper to read about dragons. <laughs> yeah. So that story is basically, um, you know, uh, this reporter has heard rumors that farmers out in the Undercliff area reported seeing um, early in the morning and late at night a uh, brass dragon um, going around and uh, biting at wolves that were attacking the sheep and, uh, you know, like, sitting in the sun and, <laughs> like, sleeping in a hay bale. Uh, mm. And then on the other side of the town, sailors report that a young uh, bronze dragon has been asking them about, it, been asking them for money uh, and will leave them alone if they throw a few gold coins at its head. What's a going on? Gold, a few gold coins at its head. <laughs> Okay. That's a whole lot of special right there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it seems to me like this. Oh, yeah, go ahead. You guys can. Yeah. 
Thelvar's just like sitting at the bar, muttering away to Lif. And it's like, I don't know why they don't understand Lif. <sighs> this Nim is just as alive as you are and just as deserving as rights. Technically, he's dead. He's not alive. <laughs> Lif kind of like pats you on the he's shoulder. Kind of he's your whole argument with that. <laughs> he is undead. He is sentient. He is still worthy of rights. As is just, him. just because he is differently sentient doesn't make him a lesser being. Do not test me. Clue just like puts his hand on shoulder. I agree with you that he's probably just as sentient as any of us. This doesn't mean I care as much as you do. Exactly. Well, well I, it's just a well, thing to I me. Do. It's unnatural. It's the same as anything here. Belvar's got a personal quest now. <laughs> and Mara's just like, I'm going to turn him evil. <laughs> I'm going to add him to my uneat my evil army. <laughs> well, not not Mara. War. War is going to be like. <laughs> uh, Gorko went into the kitchen. Uh, the bobs are like wiping off his head. Um, fussing over him, which he loves. And, uh, yeah, he wants to do the pizza part where he smashes the um, dough to make it soft and, like, stretch it. He likes that part of it. He doesn't like the adding the tomato sauce or any of the veg or the cheese. or, But he likes the beating up on the, the dough part of it. <laughs> Having fun. Um, with a big lump on his head. Big goose egg that he's got now. <laughs> Alright. Well, if you guys are okay, it seems like uh, eating pizza and ruminating over the rights of uh, nimble rights. Um, it seems like a good place for us to stop for the afternoon slash evening. Yes! Yeah. Uh -huh. Alright, uh -huh. well, the next chapter is over. Yeah. So, um, I'm gonna upload this immediately so that people can follow along with a part two. Uh, but yeah, so for those of you who are caught the end of this, we will be back next week to find out will they be able to just throw gold coins at the bronze dragon to make it go away? Uh, will Felvar be able to lobby the uh, Masked Lords of Waterdeep to change the law on nimble right rights? This and more on the next episode. <laughs> no, you forgot one. Will oh, Mara adopt the bronze dragon? Yes. Uh, well, yeah. Well, she also added another dragon to her collection of orphaned things <laughs> that she's been collecting in her menagerie. Find yes. out next Sunday on Dragon Heist slash Acquisitions Inc. mashup. Uh, goodbye from me and goodbye from the party. Say goodbye, party. Goodbye, goodbye party. Goodbye, party. <laughs> they did the bit.